what's going on everybody? Konami unfortunately still hasn't released the ban list to this day. It should have been released three weeks ago with the end of nationals and it should have been released right after the tins so that we would know what we can actually be playing for the next national event. But as such, I do not want to be making a deck profile for you guys that may be hit because I do have some decks but they are using some suspect cards that may be hit on the next ban list and as such I do not want to put those um, videos out there in case they do get hit and then you guys are wondering what cards should be replaced. But to combat that, I'm actually looking forward to the Darkwing Blast set, and we're going to be looking at an archetype that just got some recent support in it. Thankfully, Darkwing Blast is coming out soon, and that deck is actually Ninjas. Ninjas have had a pretty interesting history. You originally started out with Armed Ninja, then you had Crimson Ninja, and then you had White Ninja. Um, in Shadows of Valhalla, we got another massive wave of Ninja support. In Shadows of Valhalla, we got the Hidden Village and the Ninjutsu Arts, and we got Ninja Grandmaster Saizo, as well as Yellow Ninja, Armor Dra um, Yellow Dragon Ninja, and then we had also Mirage Transformation. A lot of those cards weren't that important, except for Ninja Grandmaster Saizo, which is their Link 2, and the Hidden Village and the Ninjutsu Arts, which is pretty good. It's a protection for ninjas. Unfortunately, it does not search on activation, but what it does do is if a ninja monster is summoned to your field, whether it be normal or special, you can target a ninja monster or ninja suit card in your graveyard and add to hand. Unfortunately, you cannot activate the card or the effects of the card with the same name for the rest of the turn, which kind of sucks. If it had not had that one clause on it, it would be a lot better than it would because that means that you could add back a ninja ninjutsu art notebook and trigger it a second time or add back a Hanzo or add back a upstart but that doesn't matter. The deck has had a lot of iterations. Back a few years ago when Summon Sork was legal, you could do some crazy plays using Isolde and Summon Sork. Um, they had some sort of success in the past, but unfortunately Ninjas fell off until this new wave of support. This new wave of support really helps the deck. As you can see, our deck is filled with tons of cards that say OCG on them. We have some great cards in Beast Ninja Baku, a Musket Ninja Kagero, Insect Ninja Mitsu, and then we also have the new Contact Fusion, which is War Ninja Mycin. We also got two new spells that are really good. We got the Ninjutsu Art Equipment Kanagamura. Sorry if I butcher these names, some of them are just really hard to say. And then we got the Novel Ninjutsu Art Book. These cards are pretty good. I love Novel Ninjutsu Art Book because it helps you in the grind game and it also sets up interruption during your opponent's turn because it is a quick play spell. What it says is if your opponent controls a card, Set one ninjutsu art spell and trap and or one ninja monster up to one from your deck and up to one from your graveyard, except novel ninjutsu art book. If this set card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one face up monster on the field and change it to face down defense position. Now you must be asking like why is this so good? It just sets two cards at, ma at max. Unfortunately it requires graveyard setup if you want to set two cards but it still sets one monster face down from your deck or sets one of your ninjutsu cards face down from your deck. It is really good because one, it can reset your ninjutsu art equipment Kanagamura, which is a pop and a revive of a ninja as well as boosting an attack. And it can also set your traps to be able to turbo out into a Miss Valley Apex Avian. Or my favorite thing about this deck, and this is the whole point that I really do love this deck now because it actually came together, is Sil Senior Silver Ninja. Senior Silver Ninja is a slow card to say the least. I don't believe it saw much play in the past, but what it does say is when this card is flipped face up, you can special summon any number of ninja monsters except Senior Silver Ninja from your hand and or graveyard in face down defense position. Now this is the really cool thing, because now we have basically an emergency teleport from the deck that sets it face down. We also have War Ninja Mycin, which says that when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can special summon one ninja monster in your, your deck in face up or face down defense position. So with the way that I have built this, either we can go high skill ceiling Oonga Boonga combos using Azold lines with um, Infernoble Knight Renaud, or you can play a crazy control grind game using Senior Silver Ninja Control by basically setting it down every single turn, recycling it with your novel notebook, 
and then also bringing it back with your ninjutsu art equipment kanagamura we can slowly accrue advantage over our opponent and be able to swarm the board and ramp up our plays by summoning out everything in face down defense positions such as hanzo um kagero baku mitsu and then the whole rest of them also you can also summon the twilight ninja getsuga the shogun face down and when you flip summon it face up in attack position what you can do is you can turn it back to defense position and it will summon two ninjas from your graveyard which can trigger your hanzo it can also trigger your um other cards that you have it's a really crazy deck the grind game is really good in it the only issue is unless you open a ninja grandmaster hanzo and a fire flint lady or if you open a upstart golden ninja and a infinite impermanence or another trap that you can discard off of it you can't really get to your high skill ceiling combos that allow you to constantly accrue advantage and make some crazy negate boards but if you can't get to that point oftentimes you're able to go into a two monster board with usually a novel notebook set down and the field spell face up and your two monsters would be ninja grandmaster saizo and war ninja mycin the cool thing with Saizo says that during your main phase, you can set one ninjutsu art spell trap directly from your deck. And while this card points to a monster or monsters, this card cannot be targeted for attack. Also, your opponent cannot target with card effects. What you'll usually put in the zone that's pointing to is War Ninja Mycin. What it says is it must first be either fusion summoned or special summoned from your extra deck by tributing the cards above, which is just two ninja monsters with different types. Very easy now because we have insect ninjas, beast ninjas, um, and then we have warriors as well as a winged beast ninja so it really does help and then what it says is cannot be targeted for attacks while you control a face down defense position monster which is really easy with your notebook then it also says that when your opponent activates a card or effect you can special summon one ninja monster from your deck in face up or face down defense position so the lock that you're going to be setting up let's say that you have the Sizo, the mycin and the novel notebook what you'll do is you'll summon out the Saizo, set the Novel Notebook, or if you have the Novel Notebook in hand, you activate and set the Field Spell, and then activate the Field Spell. Then what you'll do is you'll summon out your Mycin pointing to the zone that Saizo's in, or you summon it to the zone that Saizo points to. Once you do that, then what you'll do is you'll go into your opponent's turn. When they activate anything, you can either activate your Mycin to summon the Senior Silver Ninja in face down, or you can activate your notebook depending on if they like dark ruler your board which is really cool then what you're going to try to do is depending upon what you have in your hand and what you actually have set like if you have arm rust mist or you have transformation or shadow ceiling what you'll do is you'll try to control the board state long enough so that they run out of pops and they can't one they either can't beat over your monsters because they have to attack into your senior silver ninja first or two they run out of pops so basically they won't attack into it you go into your next turn you flip it face up and then summon five ninjas to your, or summon four ninjas to your field and basically swarm the field and then because of war ninja mycin's effect which says that your ninja monsters can attack directly if you're able to survive into your turn three with a senior silver ninja that's flipped face up then what you it's basically an otk because you'll have enough ninjas that can attack directly because you'll have Saizo for 2k, Mycin for 25, Senior Silver for 23, and then you'll have some other number of ninjas that were special summoned either in face down, or you'll just have another ninja that you can summon from your hand and then continually just either OTK them or outgrind them. The deck's really strong. I'm going to get into the card by card. I know I've kind of been doing it along the way, but I'll explain it more as I go. So we're going to start out with the Ninja Getsuga the Shogun. Shogun's really good. Um, you can actually summon it off of a Saryuja Skull Dread if you add it with a Hanzo in your like high skill ceiling combos. What it can do is basically turn itself to defense and then be able to summon two ninjas from your graveyard. Also, if you tribute summon this card, you can tribute it by tributing one ninja monster. So even though it's eight stars, you can still summon it basically like it's a five star or a six star, which is pretty cool. The next card that we're going to be running is an Apex Avian. Honestly, I don't think you need it in this deck if you're playing the control variant. Um, in the high skill ceiling like combos that require Isolde, you can oftentimes get yourself into a Ninjutsu Art of Transformation off of Hanzo's butt, and then summon out your Miss Valley Apex Avian, which is a free negate. 
but sometimes it's a brick in the hand, you don't really want to see it. So honestly, I was thinking about cutting this down and just basically playing 40. We're running one senior silver ninja, he's basically the boss monster of the deck that we're trying to turbo out and for a control variant. If we're doing the combo, then he is kind of off to the side, but if you get into a long grind game, he's definitely one of the better ninjas to have. We're running three ninja grandmaster Hanzos. Hanzo says when this card is normal summoned, add an ninjutsu card art card from your deck to your hand, which is basically your spells or your traps, so you can actually add art book off of him if you normal summon him. So at worst, you can normal summon Hanzo, add art book, and if you're like in a really bad grind game, then next turn you just activate art book, setting your senior silver ninja, and then if they can't get over that because they've ran out of cards, you win. Simple as that. Hanzo also says that when this card is flipped or special summoned, you can add one ninja monster from your deck to your hand except Ninja Grandmaster Hanzo. You can use this to add um, Twilight Ninja Jogan, which is basically a pendulum. We run two pendulum monsters because you can pendulum scale actually both of them off of Hanzo summons. And what it says is if your ninja monster attacks defense position, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent, which is the pendulum effect. But its monster effect is a special summon that if you reveal a ninjutsu art card from your hand. The only issue is if you link this off, it goes to the extra deck and you have no way to retrieve it. So usually what you'll do is you'll either, usually you just want to use these as a pen scales that you can add off. Sometimes if you're, if you're like really desperate, yes, you can special summon it for the extra extender. Then what we're doing is we're running one Musket Ninja Kagero. It requires setup, unfortunately. It says if this card is special, is special summon or flipped face up, you can special summon one ninja monster from your hand or graveyard and face down defense which is not a problem. It's good depending upon your hand. If you have like a Kagero plus a Tobari or a Kagero plus a Baku, what you can do is normal summon the Kagero, special summon the Baku, and then contact fuse into Mycin because Mycin can actually contact fuse face down monsters because you know they are ninja monsters, unlike the Lynx. Then we're running three upstart golden ninja. What it says is once per turn, you can send one trap from your hand to the graveyard, special summon one level four or lower ninja monster from your deck and face up defense position or face down defense position. Upstart's really good. We're running seven traps. So usually you can see him if you're cycling through your deck or going through it. And then having him in a trap allows you to go into Hanzo. And then Hanzo can add you a, um, like the Tobari. And then you can continue to do your combos with a Zold and whatnot, which is pretty good. I also forgot to mention Kagero has another effect that when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets one ninja card or face down defense position monster you control and no other cards, while this card is in your graveyard you can special summon this card and face down defense and if you do you basically bounce the card that they targeted back to their hand. So it avoids um, targeting destruction which is really cool. Then we have Baku, Baku is basically if he's added to the hand except by drawing it you can special him. And if he's special summoned or flipped face up, you can target a ninja or ninja to two card in your graveyard or face up spell and trap and return to the hand. So he helps in the grind game as well. Green Ninja was a V jump probo. He's all right. I don't think he's the best. I like him as like a one of because he says if a monster is special summoned to your field face up, you can target one of them and special summon this card from your hand. And if you do change that monster to face down defense position, he pairs with some of the ninjas. Basically, if you can summon out Mitsu and he's in hand, she'll, he'll flip the Mitsu face down and then you can contact these two into Mycin. Then he also says if this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard, target one monster on the field, change it to face up attack position or face down defense position. So you can actually activate some of your ninja's flip effects, which is really cool. Running run, <laughs> sorry. We're running one Renaud because of the Azold line and because we have one equip spell in this deck. If you go into Azold off of your ninjas, what you can do is you can dump the ninjutsu art equipment Kanagamura, and then you can special summon the Renaud. Renaud will add back the Kanagamura, you equip it to the Renaud, you activate its effect by banishing the Hanzo that's in the grave that you might have used to link summon, then you'll pop the Kanagamura itself, which will allow you to monster reborn the Hanzo in face down defense position which is pretty cool. We're also running three Fire Flint Lady. It's a warrior extender that can allow you to go into his old lines. And also it can sometimes unbrick your hand if you have like one ninja. If you have two ninjas in hand that are warriors, but you're just not able to get both out, what you can do is you can summon Hanzo, 
get the ninjutsu art card special fire flint then activate fire flint's effect to say like summon the upstart golden ninja or the kagero or even the green ninja so you can do any of those because it can summon a level four or lower warrior monster from your hand and your opponent can't target it with card effects i like the fire flint i think it's a really good extender in the deck it helps you push through certain like hand traps that really stop ninjas because if your upstart gets negated or if it gets like ashed you have a really rough time because you don't have much extenders except for like Mitsu. Then we're running one Kagan. It's a pen scale. Also, you can summon it off the Azold if you really wanted to to get a ninja on the field. I never do that. I use it for the pen effect. And also, I can usually pen Jogan and Kagan to get like a summon of three. And then we're also running two Sky Ninja Tobari. Tobari can't be destroyed by battle or card effects to turn it as special or flip face up. Funny enough, if you activate Ninjutsu Art of Transformation, what you can do is you can tribute a ninja and actually go into the Tobari because he's a winged beast. That's why I was saying you don't necessarily need Apex Avian. If you're trying to do like a stall strategy, they won't be able to destroy him by battle or card effect. And by the time that you usually use your Art of Transformation, they've run out of like specific banishes or bounces. We're running one Ninjutsu Art of Alchemy. What it is, it's basically like a trade-in. If you have Ninjutsu Art Notebook, you can send a ninja card from your hand to the grave and then set a Ninjutsu Art card from your deck. What you can do is you can set the alchemy, flip the alchemy face up, it sends itself and the Ninjutsu Art Notebook to the grave, and then you draw two. If you really wanted to run a draw heavy package, you could run three of this and three of the Art Notebook, which will allow you to cycle through your deck and see your power cards. We have run, sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied because I've been talking for so long. We run one Reinforcement of the Army, of course, just to add any of our ninjas. Three Art Book, I explained this earlier, We're running two Kanamagura. What it says is the equipped monster gains 500 attack and also treat as a ninja monster. You can only use one of the, each of the following effects of Ninjutsu Art Equipment Kanamagura once per turn. You can banish one ninja monster from your graveyard, then target one card in the field, destroy it. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one of your banished ninja monsters either added to your hand or special summon it in face down defense position. So what you can do is you can actually equip it to your own monster, activate its effect banishing a ninja, pop the equip spell itself, it leaves the field and then summons the banished ninja face down. It's really good in a grind game. It also resets your senior silver ninja, so basically your opponent never has a way to truly get rid of it even if they banish it, which is really cool. Running one of the field spell, I explained it earlier. It's not the best, but it's also not super bad. I like running one of it because it's at least a protection effect for your like Link or for your um, Mycin. Because Mycin does not have targeting protection himself, and he also like unfortunately like your ninjas just can be destroyed by card effects, which stink. Running three Imperm, it's the one hand trap of the deck, and it pairs well with your upstart golden ninja. We're running one. Rust Mist, funny enough, I was thinking, I was looking at this card. I used to run it back in the day when I played ninjas like casually. It's not a great card, but it's funny right now because Sprite cannot kill you for anything. Like Sprite has an issue where that if they can't get over your monsters, they just try to outgrind your deck with like um the, uh, what's it called? Runic cards. And this card basically prevents them from even trying to destroy any of your monsters by battle. It also hurts the tier matchup because if they can't, they basically get really, really weak monsters because every single time that they summon a monster, like it says when a monster is special summoned to your opponent's field or monsters is special summoned to your opponent's field, if you control a ninja, which you usually will, you'll control the link or, or the fusion or both at the same time creating a lock, then what you do is you have the current attack of that special summon monster. And that's permanent. So um, Gigantic Sprite goes down back to its original attack of, I think, 1600. Even if they try to boost it with Cat Shark, it only gets a 32. And oftentimes you can just beat over that. It's really easy. Also hurts the tier, tier matchup because Kaleido Heart goes to 1500. And it's really easy to beat over. Um, and thankfully, this card does not leave the field if there is not a ninja on the field. So this is a continuous threat as long as you can just get out your ninjas and you can outgrind them and just beat over them really easy. Because basically, Hanzo at that point is 1800, and Rust Mist turns him into a 3500 beater that 
you basically can't get over. Because everything that they are summoning has to be over 35 if they want to beat over the Hanzo. And we're running one Art of Shadow Ceiling. I'm not the biggest fan of this card. It never really comes up. It's more of a, like a win more card. What it says is you contribute a ninja monster, then target one monster your opponent controls and banish that target. While that card is banished, its monster card zone can't be used. And when this face up card leaves the field, return that card banished by this effect to the same monster zone in the same battle position. I don't like it because it's temporary removal, kind of like a Farfa. And if they get rid of this, then all of them come back, which kind of sucks. Um, the only purpose of running this is be is for basically the sprite matchup. Um, what you can do is usually you can Sizo, Mycin, and then what you'll do is you'll basically go like, okay, I'm gonna Sizo effect set shadow ceiling. During your opponent's turn, when they do anything, Mycin will be able to summon a ninja from your deck and face up or face down defense position. What you can then do is like um summon Kagero, special summon a ninja from your graveyard and face down. It might be the senior silver ninja if it was already in the graveyard, which is really cool. Then what you can do is you can shadow ceiling tributing your Kagero to banish their monster that they summon. And if the sprites don't have any level twos that they can get into, then they basically lose, which is pretty nice because this deck actually has an out to sprite. This is one of the new cards. We have Ninja Suit Art of Fall and Leaves Dance. Basically what it does is it tributes a ninja monster or a face down defense position monster on the field and specials a ninja monster from your deck. Um, you can summon Kagero. Kagero will special summon other mon um, another one in face down. Um, or you can summon out your senior silver and then basically just constantly grind as I've been saying. You can also summon out Twilight Ninja Getsuga the Shogun. He's 3k defense. He's a pretty big boy. They can't really beat over him easy. And if he survives the next turn, it's a monster reborn of two versus just a floodgate or like a basically like a flood summon. Um, and the last card we're running is Ninja Suit Art of Transformation which transforms any ninja into a beast, wing beast, or insect monster, which you can summon into any of these other ninjas now. The extra deck's pretty simple, We're running two of the new um, contact fusion, one blade and armor ninja, which is a uh, rank four, requires two level four warrior type monsters, and it can detach an XD material from this card and target a ninja I control, it can make a second attack during the battle phase. Um, blade armor ninja plus Saizo plus Mycin is OTK, because you can blade armor ninja the Mycin, and it can attack twice for 5k, and then the Saizo can go for 2k, and then the Blade Armor Ninja can go for the 22 for game. We're running one Dugaris. Dugaris comes up in the combos. Usually you can get two Hanzos out, or you can get out like a Kigero or an Upstart. We have enough level 4 access. And then Monster Reborn, a Hanzo again to trigger the Hanzo to add a um, Nether Ninja. We're running an Underworld Goddess. Um, you can get... You can easily get um, four plus effect monsters on the field. It's not hard on ninjas because they swarm the field really easily, especially with Senior Silver or even with Twilight Ninja gets Suga the Shogun, that you can contact fuse problem um, monsters off the field. So our Yuja, that's in the high skill ceiling combo. Then we have the new monster, which is Zealantis. Really good. Um, it says during your main phase, you can banish as many monsters on the field as possible, then special summon as many monsters banished by this effect as possible. To the owner's field in face up attack position, face up defense position, or face down defense position. The reason that this is really cool is because you can, after doing your Saryusha combo, which special summons out the Twilight Ninja Getsuga the Shogun, what you can do is you can summon out two Hanzos. The double Hanzo will add you two ninja monsters, then you can Zeolantis the Saryusha, banish your Hanzo Hanzo and your Twilight Ninja Getsuga, then summon out the two Hanzos again, it triggers both Hanzos which adds two more ninjas. This card is going to be insane in any deck that does not have a once per turn add on a special summon, especially in ninjas. It's amazing. We're running one Apo. We can get enough monsters to make Apo material. Nightmare Unicorn is an out to problem cards. Um, Saizo is absolutely necessary. It's amazing because it sets a ninja suit art spell and trap directly from the deck every turn. In the grind game, he's really good and he also has targeting protection and battle protection. Nightmare Phoenix gets rid of um, Spell Trap if, because we don't have a lot of Spell Trap removal. The only one that is like Kanamagura. This card single handedly outs Mystic Mine, which is really good. I love this card. Um, we're also running one Isold for the Isold combos with Renaud. A Cerberus, I threw this in here because sometimes you do want to have that one more monster pop, and you can actually link climb into like a Saryuja for the Zealantis lines. And we're running one Cross Sheep because you can make Cross Sheep in Contact Fuse under it, and it's considered a fusion and then Monster Reborn's the Hanzo. I was thinking 
So that's the end of the deck profile, but I'm going to explain some other ideas. I was thinking of running a Yellow Ninja. Yellow Ninja is really good because he specials a ninja from your hand in face up or face down defense position, or sorry, in attack position or face down defense position. The only issue is he can only, when he activates his effect, you can only special summon ninjas for the rest of the turn, which kind of sucks because it turns off the rest of your extra deck. Um, that's why I was thinking about running the triple upstart plus the triple fire flint instead of running like the triple fire flint for the yellow ninja. I was also thinking about Black Dragon Ninja. Black Dragon Ninja is basically another version of Shadow Ceiling, except he's kind of, I mean, he's all right. He has 2,800 attack, but what he says is once per turn during either player's turn, send a ninja and a ninja to arc card from your hand and or face up on the field to the graveyard. Target one monster on the field, banish it. And if this card face up card leaves the field, special summon as many monsters banished by this card's effect as possible to their owner's field. It sucks. If he's linked off, the monsters come back. If he's banished, they come back. If he's destroyed, they come back. And he's worse than Shadow Ceiling because he requires you to tribute a ninja and a ninja to art card, which sucks. I, I hate him. I see him played in some decks, but I still think he's a horrible choice. Yes, you can summon him off of Mycin. You can summon him off the Notebook um, and face down, or you can summon him off of Fallen Leaves Dance. But if you don't have enough ninjas and you don't want to really banish your contact fusion or your link, then it's not worth it. And then I explained the Apex Avian. But I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. I hope my explanations on my card choice made sense to you. And I'm going to hopefully put out another video soon on another deck that was being supported in Darkwing Blast. And that deck will actually be for hire. Funny enough, Joseph Rothschild actually posted a video recently and that build is kind of similar to mine. Um, I like running more floodgates though because the deck can cycle so easily into it. But I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.